If your company has a flexible workspace model, chances are you would have spent several hours working at one of WeWork's several locations across the country. I'm in one of those here in Bangalore for this special episode of The Weekender because this has been a landmark year for WeWork. It completes five years here in India and operationally it has been one of its best years here just yet. So we are here to catch up with its young CEO Karan Virvani to talk about the business outlook and if the coming year is going to be any better. Hi, Karan. Hi, nice to meet you. Thank you for your time on the Weekender. Thank you uh, so much. You know, you mark five years this year. It's the end of the year. So I just wanted to start by asking you what the journey has been like because, you know, you started and then there was a pandemic. Nobody would have seen that. Right. So in this very short journey, there must have been some highs and lows. So if you could take us through how it's been working here. Um, yeah, it's been honestly a crazy ride. We started five years ago in 2017 yeah. with our first building on Residency Road in Bangalore. And uh, since then, not only has it been a crazy journey building the business, but a lot of external stuff that's happened, you know, to us uh, that's made it we a lot. global? Yeah, I mean, not just that. I think, uh, you know, the pandemic to, to also begin with, which had its impact on the business. Um, and then I think prior to, you know, that um, there was the NBFC crisis in India as yes. well, which had an impact on our business. Yeah. So, we have gone through, you know, a decent amount of challenges just in five years. But today, you know, we sit with a really strong business. Our business is almost six million square foot, uh, you know, across the of office space across the country. Uh, we have about 41 locations uh, that we've opened in the last five years and about 60,000 members that are within our spaces at, you know, any given point in time. Um, and our buildings are about 90% full now. So, you know, to kind of um, see us, we were spiking a lot between 2017 to 2019, mm. and then the pandemic hit, and suddenly there was this huge vacuum, um, and we were not used to our spaces being, you know, how empty uh, they were. Uh, but today, you know, to see life back in the spaces, to see that the segment itself has grown so much, and COVID has just completely flipped the switch on... Yeah people's adoption towards this type of model for okay. work. You, you've summarized uh, my first 10 questions, <laughs> but let me try and get more out of you in terms of operationally the year sure. has been good one for you. Yeah. You've finally turned profitable, yeah. and I won't say finally actually because it's only been five years. Yeah. But is this kind of growth trajectory now going to be sustainable? What kind of revenues are you currently clocking in? Um, yeah, for sure. So we were actually profitable just before the pandemic hit as well, um, you know, and um, that year would have been a great year for us if it hadn't happened. So it took us about 18 months to recover from that. Yeah. And since last November, we have been profitable as a business. Yeah. Um, and we ended this year with close to about 180 crores in, in profit and EBITDA this calendar year and about 1,300 crores of revenue. And that revenue is almost doubled from last year? Almost. Uh, yeah, pretty much. It's like 70% up from last year. Uh, and just in the last five years, it's grown 46 times. Okay, uh, but uh, <laughs> what is driving? this kind of a growth because you're coming on a smaller base also because last year would have been harder because of the pandemic yeah um, so I think that the biggest change that we've seen is a huge amount of adoption uh, to the model uh, from large enterprises that has you know surprised us I would say over the last two years companies that probably never uh, considered flex as a way of working or an are option are, are doing it already and they're yeah. coming in a big way and at the same time, I think the Indian ecosystem itself has matured a lot as well as, you know, 
companies are actually building good businesses. So mm -hmm. those businesses have actually grown within our spaces. Um, you know, a lot of businesses who started off with three, four desks, you know, now 100, 200 plus people companies. Mm -hmm. It just shows the strength of the Indian ecosystem and like what's happening in India yeah. and Indian entrepreneurship, I think is... We, we get to people. what's happening in India and how that impacts your business but uh, you know compared to what happened during the pandemic time footballs uh, occupancy levels yeah. how have they changed pre-pandemic and from the pandemic what has been the uptick so to speak so honestly this is the highest occupancy we have ever had in pre, your five years in the entire five years okay. um, and we've seen actually footfall come back also uh, to pretty much pre-pandemic levels but there is definitely a change in behavior and how people are working uh, people are doing uh, you know uh, are much more flexible during the week and, and and companies are also giving that flexibility so you'll actually see Tuesday Wednesday Thursday as like the most amount of footfall in the buildings okay. versus Monday and Friday is yeah. is much lighter <laughs> what do you do with the building on the weekends uh, we have members actually who work you know Saturdays and Sundays um, and actually some one of the things that came out of the pandemic as a revenue stream for us is, is shoots uh, like okay. movie shoots and TV shows. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. you might have seen many uh, shows now that have our back, you know, office in the background. Mm -hmm. And actually that's, you know, just showing an interesting trend of what even people perceive as the office versus what it used to be, you know. Tell me in terms of your expansion plans, you said about 6 million square feet of office space as of now. Yeah. Uh, where do you hope to go in the next one year, a number of desks that you're looking to add and will you continue to be in these six locations only? So as a brand, our focus continues to be in the metro cities. That's yeah. uh, for the near term or you know near to long term. That's really where we want to be. Okay. We see most of the demand uh, and the you know type of talent that our um, com the companies that house within a WeWork space uh, will continue to grow in these sort of six cities. So we want to continue to be there. And in terms of expansion, um, you know, uh, by the end of, by March, basically by the end of this financial year, we'll be at about 75,000 deaths, okay. um, which is that six to six and a half million square foot. Okay. And we'll be adding about 20,000 deaths in the following year. So, mm -hmm. you know, by the next financial year, which is FY 23, 24, yeah. we should end at between 95 to 100,000. Okay, and do, uh, I read somewhere that you have some sort of a heat map to see where the demand is going to come from and accordingly you'll set up uh, you know we work offices in those locations something of that sort oh no it's so we um, are trying to understand our users better within the space yeah. so we are uh, you know doing uh, we've partnered with uh, stack you to run a spatial analytics program mm -hmm. that uses a lot of the CCTV footage that we have in the buildings mm -hmm. to tell us whether the spaces we've designed are actually being utilized the way that we you know, thought they would be utilized. So a common area space where we've maybe put a lounge or, you know, uh, a huddle space, is it actually being used in that manner or, you know, is it not being used? And in the future, can we, you know, shift that around to make it something that actually would be more usable? Um, and also when we design future buildings to make our design a lot more user-friendly and efficient, yeah. um, that's what we're trying to do with, with that. So trying to use technology as much as possible to deliver a better member experience for, for so within these six cities that you're currently present in, all yeah. the metros, where do you see higher demand? Where has demand been hit because of the pandemic? Where has it not come back? Where has it sprung back? So uh, if you see a demand, I think has always been very strong within the south compared to any part of the country. So that's Bangalore and Hyderabad, uh, you know, drive a big chunk of the demand. Yeah. Um, India leases close to about 45 million to 50 million square foot a year. Yeah. And usually Bangalore does between 14 to 16 million off that. So, yeah. you know, pretty much like one third or, you know, 40 percent of the stuff is happening in Bangalore. Um, our growth markets are going to be Hyderabad, Pune and Bangalore uh, okay. for a large chunk as well as Noida and Gurgaon. Um, but, um, That's everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I would say pre predominantly more towards Bangalore, Hyderabad and Pune. I see. Um, and wouldn't you re need capital, uh, you know, to make good on these expansion plans that you've laid out for us? Are you in the market to raise capital? Um, 
We do always need capital and it's, uh, you know, earlier when we were trying to build a business, we had a lot of operational burn and we were obviously, you know, not profitable since the last 12 months. Um, the business is generating, you know, good amount of cash flows and we're actually able to cover all of our business operational expenses as well as any financing that we've actually taken. So um, for future expenses, CapEx is going to be required and we have cash flows to be able to sustain that. How much that. CapEx would be required <laughs> for future expenses? Um, I think for this year we would, uh, you know, for the following year would be up close to about 300 crores. 300 and, crores, um, okay. About 50%, more than 50% of that actually comes from our landlords who are now partnering with us. Eventually, do you see WeWork in India going public? I, will, I mean, I think any entrepreneur would love to do that. Uh, and the business. Not all. <laughs> Uh, well, at least our business is very conducive for it and okay. we've not really chosen a path as yet, mm. but you know, obviously some sort of big event in the, in the near future, in the next you know, 12 to 24 months yeah. is something that we will need to do, um, purely just to give a return to our investors in terms of the capital. That so that in. big event in the next one or two years is going to be an IPO? It could or it could just be another private round, um, you okay. know, if that's we chose to do that. Do you think as a startup it's harder to raise capital at the valuation that you want? Are you looking at debt also as one of the routes to perhaps extend your runway before you go public or raise yeah, money? Like private? I said, I mean, we, you know, our runway is good. We have like enough cash in the bank. Um, we are uh, generating cash as, as a business as well. Mm -hmm. So that way we're fine. And we do get, you know, uh, low cost debt for some of the capex that we do. Yeah. These are, you know, more asset light structures. Mm -hmm. However, um, yeah, and that, that's really all we need money for. What about the global company we work? I mean, it last infused capital into we work in India 2020, I believe. Yeah, that's right. Uh, will it be infusing more capital anytime soon, what the plans are? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Um, you know, I, I, we don't have any need for that to actually happen right now. So okay. um, we're in a good place, luckily, You're touch in a good wood. Place. You're in a good place, <laughs> touch wood. Yeah. But we were global, not so much, right? They're burning through a lot of the cash that they raised from SoftBank. They're in debt. Nos I mean, losses have been narrowing to an extent. Yeah. But, you know, the recession in the U.S., mm -hmm. um, the tech layoffs that have been happening, all that doesn't augur well for business. Yeah. Um, are you concerned at every level, is it going to impact operations in India as well? Uh, I am not concerned at all. Like, uh, you know, one, I, I really can't comment on, on we were global. All I can tell you is that I know that every single market is actually following suit to where we are right now in the sense that, mm -hmm. you know, uh, people are coming back, occupancies are filling up and, uh, you know, it's a matter of time before they reach also pretty high occupancy levels. Yeah. The adoption that we're seeing in India is happening at a global level and, uh, and not just here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that we are just a little bit smaller than some of the other markets, so it was a lot easier and faster for us to, to get there and we did focus a lot more on our unit economics right from the start mm. however that being said uh, Europe is doing amazing Japan is doing incredible Latin America I know is doing incredible but, you know right now with, given that you know startups are a big customer for you yeah. right and with what's going on with them there's layoffs there's restructuring in the worst cases they're shutting down in businesses yeah. as well how has that impacted business for you so um, there's, it's interesting, right? Like when things are super uncertain, our model actually makes the most sense. It moves people away from like yeah, having more capital. fixed and traditional and capital intensive type of you know That's options to a much more flexible asset light, uh, you know, scale up, scale down type of solution, which is which is very much needed when things are you know very 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 uncertain. Yeah. And I think that's what happened through COVID. Yeah. Uh, people started to realize that they were holding on to all of these spaces that they couldn't go to, and then they were paying for it. Yeah. Um, and so those type of you know customers are coming to us. Sure. But at the, at, I just at the same time, I think you know as, as recession or things uh, of a of a negative nature hit. Uh, as a company and as a as culture, you tend to huddle rather than not try to be together. And the office has always been that place, and it, it continues to be the space where you would come. Are you to. saying you've remained immune to all of these uh, restructurings, the shutting down of several businesses, the layoffs that have happened in the startup community? 
Uh, we've not seen any big impact. Obviously, a few organizations that were with us have let go of people, but um, you know, there's lots of companies within our space that are actually growing. So when we look at our member base, um, there's way more growth than there is, you know, any uh, any sort of like reduction. What about your on-demand and some of your digital offerings? Yeah. How are they doing in this environment? Are uh, they honestly, that business completely shocked me. Uh, it was a uh, uh, you know thing that came out of the pandemic. It was a way for us to try to generate something during the <laughs> pandemic and try to get people into the space. And today, it's grown into a full-fledged business. Not only that, I think it's disrupting completely how people think about the office in general. You know, what we see is the office is going to become a place for collaboration versus a fixed desk type of setup. And also there's a lot more workers that are gig remote and they need infrastructure uh, sometimes during the week to do work yeah. that's outside of their home. And this is actually going to be able to provide that. Uh, but you know, competition is also growing for you, right? Like I just crossed two office <laughs> locations on the way. Yeah. Uh, you know, there are many more. I yeah. don't even name. But what are you doing differently to stay relevant, to stay on top of your game? Um, I think we've, you know, been very sure about our place in the entire segment. So we, we continue to be the mid to premium player, I would say. And you can see that with the quality of our space and the quality of our customers as well. Um, you know, why we attract some of the best multinationals is because of the experience and the space that we provide. So our focus is to give the best product and service that we possibly can and continue to- Keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd continue to innovate. And I think long term, you know, people see value in that. And that's why we, I think, are doing so well. Um, that being said, I think that our competitors also deserve a little bit of credit. Without them, the segment itself wouldn't have grown the way that it is. I think, you know, Flex has now become a permanent part yeah. of commercial real estate and each one of them is providing a, a niche within the space. You know, it might be low cost, it might be tier two, it might be enterprise only. Um, and we've taken a conscious decision that we will be a platform that provides products across the board. Um, but we will continue to So everybody is going to have their niches, but you're going to be a jack of all trades. <laughs> exactly. Okay, uh, on that note, because we have to take a break, I'll quickly ask you, uh, like I said, it's been operationally a good, for, good year for you as yeah. we're entering 2023. You yeah. think business is going to be much better, profits are going to be higher, revenue is going to grow? I mean, <laughs> that's what we're planning for, but you, we've... we've I would say become a lot more conservative than we might have been in year one and year two. In terms of your cash burn? Yeah, just look, profitable growth is, is really what we've been on the path on for the last two years, actually. Uh, since since, since sort of like year. COVID uh, hit us, or yeah. even actually before that, yeah. um, you know, that's been the focus. So our focus is really right now, um, you know, customer experience, member experience, our product and the bottom line. So we have no reason to chase any type of growth numbers or, you know, some expansion numbers for the sake of chasing it. Yeah. Um, we're going to be focused on building a very strong, steady business. Um, it is a business that actually grows a lot faster than, you know, some of the others just because of the nature of it um, and um, you know we want to take advantage of that so focus is going to be where we're maturing <laughs> and where we're focused on you know making sure our unit economics stay stay quite steady okay so we have uh, a few more questions for you but we have to take a short break <laughs> okay so we'll be right back in just a moment stay with us Welcome back. I'm in conversation with Karan Birbani. We work on this special episode of The Weekender. Karan, thanks very much for staying with us. Uh, you know, tell us about the trends that you've seen post-pandemic in the demand for workspace. Um, are startups asking for more space, less space? Yeah. Commercially, you know, how has it been? So we've seen, um, you know, the complete behavioral uh, change happen in terms of how companies are sort of looking at their workspace, um, you know, from being a place where every employee had a fixed desk and a row of, you know, sort of uh, seats and, and, and tables to uh, becoming spaces that are a lot more dynamic and more conducive for collaboration and people actually using the office as a social hub and as an identity of their organization. Um, so, you know, um, 
days in the week where teams are actually coming in or people are coming in <coughs> to do these in-person interactions or to huddle as a team and have you know, problem solve or um, you know, do town halls that is going to help build culture. So one, the office is becoming much more for collaboration and culture. We are seeing that um, you know, there's a difference in different sectors. So in Mumbai and uh, you know, in the financial sector, everyone is pretty much back in the office. Uh, some of the banks, the guys never even left uh, the <laughs> office. Whereas you know, in Bangalore, some of the tech companies are facing a challenge in pe bringing people back to an office in a permanent basis and I think that's what's giving rise to this hybrid model. Yeah. So, you know, through the pandemic we came out with these products like WeWork On Demand and our All Access product which basically gives individuals or companies the ability to come to an office when they want mm -hmm. uh, and not actually carry that cost on for so long. That's taken off so much and I think it's a lot to do um, and it's a transitionary way of bringing sort of employees back. We want to know who you are outside of WeWork. So okay. let me start by asking you who is Karan Virvani, if not the CEO of WeWork? Uh, I am someone who loves the outdoors. Uh, I love doing anything that involves, uh, you know, being in nature. So trekking, or I, used, I grew up horse riding. I used to be a national level horse rider. Oh. Um, okay. My passion is heavily into food. Uh, I love food in any way. My first business was, you know, an F and B hospitality business. Oh, that's amazing. And uh, both me and my wife, whenever we travel, like that's how our whole trip is planned, it's just basically around restaurants and what we're going to eat. And um, yeah, pretty much that and uh, you, know, we, as a, you know, as a family we've been within the real estate yes. business for the last 30 years so yeah. I think I've grown up in this kind of environment. If you actually did take that advice and have your vision on the long term goals, what are they? Will you continue to be, do you see yourself at WeWork or do you see yourself going back to the family business? Where will you be? I think this is something that, you know, my journey, I think, generally is to try to build things that will last longer than me. So, you know, whether it's WeWork or, you know, 10 years later, whether it's something completely uh, different. Yeah. Uh, I, my nature is to be an entrepreneur, to build things from ground up. I think that's what excites me the most. So, But do you see yourself uh, going back to Embassy, for instance? Yeah, I, th I mean, it's my, you know, it's our family business and I am also the eldest of uh, three brothers. Okay. Um, so I am already sort of involved, you know, at a high level and um, it's such a great platform that's allowed us to build businesses similar to WeWork that, mm -hmm. you know, the opportunities that will come in the future to, to do stuff from that platform is also invaluable. All right, Karan, <laughs> it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much for yeah, your time. Thank you so much. Thank you.